Cool. Hey, Amy, uh, thanks for joining in for the one minute CM game. Uh, thank you for taking time out uh, for this particular uh, episode. Uh, friends, we have Amy Kumar. Uh, she's a classical Kuchipudi dancer and uh, she's been practicing this for almost 20 years. She uh, not only practices, but she also teaches uh, Kuchipudi. And apart from this, she is also managing her professional career well. Uh, she is uh, into pharma in industry and uh, she's been doing pretty good in managing these two. And good reviews I've re received from uh, the students who got trained under her. So Amy, can, can you introduce our new friends about you and uh, we can get started? Sure. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Amy. And firstly, thank you so much Ravi for uh, inviting me to be a part of this wonderful series. I've been following most of the interviews that have been happening and it's, it's wonderful to be a part of this. Uh, like uh, you mentioned, dancing has been a part of my life since 20 years now. Um, mm -hmm. I started my formal training when I was nine, but um, just recently during, you know, because we're in the lockdown, we've been watching a lot of family videos and I came across a video wherein I was four and I was dancing all by myself in one corner. So I'm wow. guessing dancing has just been a part of my life since even before I remember. And uh, formal training started when I was nine. It wasn't mm -hmm. a planned decision to, you know, get trained in Kuchipudi. Um, I remember very uh, clearly, I was nine and um, there was this dance class which was adjacent to my dad's office in Hapsi Guda. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kept pestering my mom. I was like, I want to go, I want to go. I see these kids, you know, practicing outside uh, in the corridor. So yeah, mom took me and it just happened to be Kuchipudi. And that's just how it began. And there was just no stopping after that. It just kept... You know, I just kept getting more and more involved in the dance form and uh, the more artists I met, the more gurus I trained under, it just became a part of my DNA. And um, when it comes to my professional uh, career, I've always been this kid who wanted to, you know, study well and, you know, get my grades in place. And it was also a time when I wanted to do my PhD. Uh, mm -hmm. My mom herself being a PhD and a postdoc in botany, like way back in the 80s, she did her PhD and postdoc and my dad being an engineer. I mean, studies was like a very uh, integral part of me growing up, like, you know, so that was kind of, you know, a thing which was going to happen anyway. Uh, so, yeah, I just kept studying. I kept dancing. I kept giving exams. Even during exams, I'd give shows and, you know, not miss my dance classes. So when people ask me, how do you manage? I really don't have an answer because it was just something I kept doing all my life. Um, it was just like another subject for me, dancing, but it wasn't something that um, was a burden. It was like my de-stressing de activity. Uh, when it became an integral part of my life, I don't remember exactly, but I think it was during my teenage years, you know, when, you know, like usual, any other teenager, you go through a little confused state, you don't know what to do and, you know, all of that. Dance was something that I just fell back on, yeah. You know, anytime I was stressed, confused, even till date, mm -hmm. it's just something that I just fall back on with absolutely nothing um, to look forward to in return. You know, I'm just doing it because I love it and it makes me so happy. Um, and all of us live these really stressed out, busy schedule lives, you know, like mm -hmm. nine to five job and, you know, traveling in the city only is like a huge task. All of us agree with it, I'm sure. So having a passion and basically something to just fall back on, you know, when things get a little hectic is, I think, very important. And I was just lucky to, you know, be introduced to this dance form. And the best part is, uh, you know, uh, the, your facial expressions, your features, you know, uh, they really suit this classical, uh, you know, dance. And because it takes uh, certain qualities to fit into that attire. And uh, those expressions, I, I think I've gone through your pictures and, you know, that super woman, it's like a right match. Uh, I, I still get confused. I've, I've seen a few people who are into classical dancing. Is it that they get onto those features? I mean, that becomes their, uh, yeah. you know, uh, normal default features because they've danced for a couple of years? Or uh, is it that, uh, you know, that that's like the pre-qualification to get into it? You know, that's such a valid point that you brought out, Ravi, because um, I kind of believe that what we do, mm -hmm. you know, in our lives influences who we are as people. 
and not just at a physical level but at a dna level it's not just the genes you know which is passing on from generations but it's the activities that we surround ourselves with like you know mm-hmm. classical dancers like using our facial muscles is an integral part of being a classical dancer and you know a lot of people have told me that you're so expressive some have told me that i'm very animated also actually <laughs> so yeah. that that i have no control over it it's just what i've been doing since i was 9 and of course i mean i'm sure facial features also have gotten you know uh, tuned and adapted to you know the the muscle The, the movements and all of that so it could be both ways i don't think it was um, something that i was born with completely it could be also the dancing that has kind of made it what it is now <laughs> but awesome job in you know managing your profession and you know, i think if your credit goes to all the companies you worked with who have uh, understood that you have to continue your passion while you're working for the organization so you know kudos to both of you i think uh, that that's an awesome job absolutely I years think, uh, yeah i think credit firstly will definitely go to family because you know taking mm-hmm. you to dance classes every single week being there for your shows it's like a huge process especially indian classical i'd like to point out because now that i'm teaching and i have mm-hmm. parents come with their kids this 5 year old kid comes with her mom who doesn't even want to learn but her mom comes and you know keeps supporting her for like months until you know she can let her be alone in class so being a a, a supportive parent is absolutely important especially for indian classical dancing and so credit goes to my family first and then like you did mention uh, i work for wonderful companies like when i was at ccmb i mean it was a research and it's a research institute and they they're so involved in art like if you walk into that institute you'll have these wonderful paintings all around and every year they'd have these wonderful events wherein you know they'd have dances and skits and you know i danced everywhere wherever i've been i've been dancing uh, so and then when i moved to dr reddy's um i was skeptical because a lot of people said once you join a corporate you know you won't have the time and you know you won't be able to manage but it just worked out and you know i was pleasantly surprised when they actually acknowledged my work and gave me an award for unstoppable fa- passion in dance like that was like amazing i never expected a company to acknowledge the work you're doing outside of you know your job and even in gvk bio i mean you know it's the current the current company i'm working with it's uh, it's been wonderful i've never had to stop what i've been you know doing all my life yeah this is the message i mean this is one of the message i wanted all the audience to like i mean we have some people who are leaders uh, in this particular group watching this so i think this is something which we should remember uh, either we have to be in art or at least we have to encourage art which is around us and people who are involved in it and uh, you know you are into a passion of classical dance which needs a lot more patience than uh, any other dance forms uh, so what what's your take on that uh yeah that's very true when it comes to indian classical dancing i think any classical art form not just mm-hmm. indian like even if you talk about ballet it takes years of training and i think becoming a wonderful artist is just a part of the whole thing but the process that one goes through you mm-hmm. know those years of training the failures the struggles the the muscle tears uh, the heartbreak when you don't perform well all of that just kind of makes you who you are as a person and a performer on stage and an artist even if you're not performing on stage once an artist always an artist and i think that's very important being patient is 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 a quality which every individual needs at some point in life and if this art form is uh, is giving you that because most indian classical dancers start off at like what 5 6 years so if you're learning it at such a young age i mean i mean it's wonderful you learn a lot more than just patience also you learn a lot about yourself during that process because there's a lot of internalization of the art that happens especially in indian classical dancing as we keep growing older and as we keep understanding more and more about it so yeah that's why that's what i mean when i say i fall back on it you know it's a lot more than bodily movements yeah i'm sure during childhood it would be like if you have to put an expression it is uh, you know it is You know, the expression is put because the teacher is asking for it but yeah. you know as you grow older that expression you basically start feeling it that exactly. you are angry or sad so that's uh-huh. 
yep yeah, and there is a whole lot of difference when you start expressing yes yes it's it's a beautiful experience yeah and it's something that you can only experience is really hard to put it into words sometimes so sometimes when my students ask me these questions you know i mm-hmm. don't know i don't have the answers to everything and i think that's also a beautiful experience you know being a teacher i started teaching at the age of like 17 so i was mm-hmm. very young and my guru was like extremely supportive my guru dr anupama kala she never said you know you're too young you shouldn't be teaching or anything like that so the whole process of teaching was the biggest learning experience for me and it still is like every time a 5 year old or 6 year old asks me a very basic question like you have to rack your brain like literally to answer it in a way that she understands it so that's wonderful and there's so much you learn from kids i think especially nowadays the today's generation they're so smart and they're so like fearless in a way that earlier we would be so afraid to ask questions but they're so fearless and they're so um intelligent that it's a wonderful two way give and take relationship that i share with my my kids awesome good yeah. so there there are fans who are casting this particular telecast on a large screen because they are your fans so oh. can we quickly get into rapid fire questions oh i'm really nervous about this because i've never actually played a rapid fire round ever especially on like facebook live so please be a little easy on me <laughs> your, your friends have given some tough questions for you. Oh, so really? I can't ready. see any of the comments. So, I have no idea who's asking what. <laughs> so yeah, we have uh, Manjula Reddy Garu. Uh, she is actually uh, doing oh, some dear, comments. Uh, right? hmm, what okay. does she say? <laughs> so she is saying Amy is a wonderful artist. So I am happy to see her here. So yep, your yeah. plans have started coming on it. <laughs> So here we start. So Amy, uh, describe Amy as a teenager versus now. Amy as a teenager versus now. Amy as a teenager was uh, a rebel, confused, mm-hmm. chaotic, um, experimental, mm-hmm. um, and Amy now is a lot more calm and composed. Yeah. Good. So top six expressions. Can you name it and do it on screen? Oh, name it and do it. Okay. Yeah. I I fall back on the Navarasas because those are the basic nine expressions that every individual possesses. Um, my favorite um, would be the Amy, the teenage Amy would do this a lot. You can you fa- mm-hmm. okay? So I'll do the expression. You have to guess what it is. Shall we do that? Oh, that would be difficult because I don't know <laughs> Navarasas. So okay, mention okay, that. I'll tell you what it is. Give it pause so and then we can do it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the first one is shringara or to feel okay. shy. Mhm. Wow. I hope so, I hope that came yes. through. Okay. Yes. And um then I'll do the, this this is the expression that my mom had for the longest time during my teenage days. Mm-hmm. Raudram, anger. Yeah. Yeah. and my reaction to that would be bhayanaka or fear oh, fear which my students never have towards me <laughs> and uh, my favorite of late and something that i'm trying to attain is shantam hmm. or peace <laughs> and so that's hasyam are... to laugh <laughs> to be <laughs> <Okay>. happy <laughs> good one uh, so next question what is the weirdest thing you've done along with your friends oh weirdest thing oh my god um i'll have to be very careful when i answer mm. this but you know bunking colleges and you know classes that's bunking like common what what yeah, is that that's really weird. what is that that's the thing uh, i never had the time no ravi that's the thing i was either in college or i was in dance class or i was mm. on the stage giving shows or i was teaching so where was the time for me to do anything like weird weird so whatever little time i had i would try and do you know some bunking and going out with friends and you know stuff like that nothing compared to what my students do huh? these yeah. days absolutely <laughs> not <laughs> and what are the weirdest things they do i don't think i should uh, snitch on them 
<laughs> they they stop telling me things then see this is what happens when you know uh, your aunt like manjula reddy garu joins in early starting itself then you know it, it becomes you you do you will not be able to you know no, tell no. Me that. Uh, i i must tell you i have the coolest family ever my aunts were were the were these i have these wonderful aunts i think manjula reddy aunt who's watching me now she knows everything about my life like uh, i would go and tell her things It's me or mm-hmm. my cousin. We go and tell her things, and they'd give us like advice also how, on how to like chill. So <laughs> it's not because of her, but I've never done only too much. <laughs> Good. So we're coming on to the next question. So what are the best yeah. compliments you've received uh, till date for your performance? For my performance, recently, um, I had an online uh, a live performance uh, on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, a wonderful um, Bharatnatyam dancer from the city, Pramod, had organized a three-day dance festival. So I had performed um, two Abhinaya-based pieces, and I got a wonderful compliment from my guru. And uh, those compliments, the compliments I received from my family and my teachers, are always the most important. So just a great job, and you know, I liked what you did. That's like amazing. Okay, so this is a tricky one. <clears throat> Which pop singer would be an awesome fit for Kuchi Pudi dance? So the names are Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, uh, Dua Lipa, and Mary. Who's the last one? Uh, and Mary. Okay, I don't even know who she is. I I feel really sad now. But I know yeah. the first three, and mm-hmm. uh, I love Katy Perry. and i think she looks stunning i don't know about how she would you know perform like dance but i think just the makeup and the attire of indian classical dancing would go beautifully on katy perry i think she has beautiful features yeah do you know the tattoo she has on her no what is it okay she has got a tattoo on her uh, biceps uh, which basically says anuchut uh, pravaha something which uh, in sanskrit means go by the flow oh so, wonderful yeah she has got a tattoo on her uh, With Sanskrit, and she is very inclined towards uh, Indian tradition. Oh, wonderful! So she yeah. should she should definitely explore. I think. <laughs> Best summer vacation. Uh, we'd go on a lot of family. I live in a joint family, so we we'd all drive down to wherever we were going. Goa, I remember. With all the cousins, like twenty of us in five cars, driving down from Hyderabad to Goa. Best vacation. Okay. Now talking about outdoors, what I mean, you you would have done a lot of performances on the stage, indoor stages. What was the best location where you performed in terms of scenic view, like scenic beside a beach or on the mountains? What was that? It need not be performance with audience. If you have performed even all alone, that's fine. What was the best location? You know, uh, you know, Ravi. What happens to me when I perform on stage? Um, the surroundings no they just transcend into energies for me more than visual um uh, i don't see things around me i feel things around me so it really doesn't matter to me as such if it's a very scenic beauty sort of a uh, place but um the the last performance that actually um moved me as an artist was at this uh, at the jagannath temple in uh, jubilee hills I had a performance out there, and the energies were really, really powerful out there. So that was something that I remembered for a few days, even after the show. That's nice. Yeah. So, best child student you've come across as a teacher? Oh, I can't pick one. That'll be very unfair, and I'm sure most of them are watching also, or they'll watch this again later. Then they'll be very upset. I can't pick one. <laughs> okay. that's that's good uh, that's a good call uh, what would you i mean would you like to order at home or do you generally go by request so at home or uh, with friends and is like go to order karegi ya or you're oh, more you more like food food. Food. yeah oh, oh okay um now i don't even remember the last time i ordered in or went out but um i like going out but it depends i'm very moody I'm a very moody person, so it it all depends on my mood. I enjoy going out and I enjoy ordering in as well. So maybe if it's a weekday, I'll order in. If it's a weekend, I'll go out. Yeah. Okay. Now, what uh, the question was more meant about, you know, do we do you boss around or do, are you a person who generally goes by request? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Or is it? Yeah, you can do it. 
i i can be quite bossy i think it's a teacher in me okay yeah and all my cousins also my younger ones will agree i'm sure i am bossy good so what's the nickname your friends call you apart from my friends it's mm-hmm. such a short name already they can't really cut it shorter no than that my aunt sometimes calls me aims aims yeah <laughs> okay uh, most boring thing ever most boring thing ever mm-hmm. i don't know yeah maybe some of the lectures that i attended in college because <laughs> i had really bad teachers some of them were very bad and because of them i think i even started hating a few subjects mm-hmm. and which are physics physics see first thought that comes into your mind uh, when somebody says village or hometown green pollution free okay are you a dada's girl or mama's girl depends on the mood and what i want <laughs> i'm a single oh. child so you know i've been mm. pampered to the core okay so if you have to play a prank today uh, which friend would you pick and try to play a prank my friend erika nathan who's in uk right now even okay. if i tell her what i'm going to do she'll still fall for the prank so it'll be a <laughs> lot of fun good one so good good job on uh, you know the rapid fire questions i mean it's, it's so done it's really natural so that was fun yes good good to know some of uh, your secrets uh, amy i'm sure your students will see that and you know get prepared so now coming on to the you know the main topic you have your one minute chief minister what are the things you would focus on if you become a chief minister so i was thinking really hard about this question ravi and then um, the more i thought about it i could only relate to what i know and what i have experienced as a person mm-hmm. i feel um the first the first thing that i would do is make sure people are doing their job mm-hmm. and uh, make sure you appoint people who are educated and experienced enough in the field that they are being appointed for and uh, education 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 i think everything boils down to education i know our education system isn't the best in the world but the first mm-hmm. step would be to make sure that people are implementing what they've been mm-hmm. told to do and you know people are getting educated to start with just make sure everyone's getting educated and then later on kind of you know you can you can work around with the system and make it a little more application based that would be the second thing and the third thing would be to pay teachers yeah Yeah. teaching is the most important profession you say education if you don't have good teachers what's the point of the whole thing of going to school and getting a degree you need to have teachers who inspire teachers who motivate you teachers who make you understand what is actually you know being taught not just learning it for marks or grades and if you don't going to pay the teachers enough who would want to become a teacher nowadays the respect is only not there that much for teachers and mm-hmm. then you're not going to pay them enough salary also who would want to become a teacher so i think education system pay the teachers more make sure the teachers are uh, are qualified and educated enough themselves first to start with mm-hmm. and another thing i'd like to bring in is a little more focus on art because we ourselves have experienced it i think all of us globally in this lockdown we all turned to artists in our low yeah. times movies or music or theater or dance or whatever it is so i think a little more importance should be given to arts it is being given uh, hyderabad is a wonderful city and it is quite artistically inclined but i think it should be a little more um, in the limelight so these are the few things that i i would try to bring changes in thanks amy so uh, one last question do you have any suggestions for uh, moms or you know women who want to do something in their life uh, you know they couldn't do something because of their uh, you know marriage they got married because of the kids but uh, do you think that they still have scope and they, they still can drive something or the other do you have any suggestions for women out there yes yes i most definitely do have something to say um i'd start with talking about my own students so mm-hmm. i have like um, 
uh, these five six year old kids who'd come with their moms and would wouldn't want to dance so the first suggestion i'd give the mother is you join the class you know you you may not be interested in dancing but it's good it's good uh, physical activity it's exercise so just join in and then eventually you know you can leave and then the kid will continue you won't believe it the mother stayed and it's been months and it's been even years that few of them are are, are still learning from me they've even performed on stage so i mm-hmm. think um the the barriers are in our head okay and i think marriage and children will be there it's a part of life if you if you've chosen that road to go down get married and have kids it's it's going to be there but taking time out for yourself and making sure you know what you're doing and you're happy with what you're doing i think that's that's important and um, age is definitely not it shouldn't be an obstacle for anybody who wants to try out any art anything related to art because i think in the end no when you when you're done with your 9 to 5 job and they tell you that you know you're old enough you leave now we're done with you that is what is going to you know define who you are as a person and you're going to fall back on that so this is an advice i would give people women especially who are my age or younger than or older than me please take time out for yourselves please mm. do things that make you happy because only when you're happy will you be able to make other people happy around you and dance paint sing do whatever you want to do irrespective of how old you are you may not become like the the best dancer in the world or you know top notch singer but that's okay i think it's very important to also set goals which are you know realistic you can't join in when you're 40 and expect things to happen in 2 3 years set realistic goals but but do it don't okay. stop yourself from doing it don't let age stop you from doing what you want to do okay thank you me any any other words for uh, your new friends your uh, family joined in any any suggestions any message Oh, for lockdown. everybody who's watching, thank you so much for watching. And um, all I'd like to say is, in this lockdown, we've all been bogged down with a lot of negativity and a lot of um, just a lot of negative news all around us. So I think it's very important for us to focus on what we have and what we've been blessed with. Um, be grateful. Be kind. Be happy. Do what makes you happy. Make others happy. And I think that's all that matters in life. thank you so much for watching and thank you so much ravi for initiating this i think it's a wonderful initiative because the the kind of people you're bringing in i'm seeing doctors nurses dancers actors i think my brother's coming on on monday my cousin brother so it's wonderful that you're interacting with people from so many different walks of life i think it's fantastic that you're doing this so congratulations to you thank you thank you for inspiration speech and you know inspiring uh, oh my god inspiration <laughs> inspiring episodes like this you know this is also inspiration for me so to continue and you know uh, invite more people more passionate people to talk and because uh, some of these videos are also going out uh, to a larger audience who also need inspiration to start something so i have a, a group of women entrepreneurs who want to do something in their life and you know they they feel that okay aur kuch karna hai so right. all these go there so there is a lot of valuation that this interaction is bringing not only to the people who are joining in live so thank you amy for uh, taking time out and doing this all the best with whatever you do i am one of your fan following uh, who is added up uh, to your list so awesome expression keep up with a good job and uh, you know that poster which i have selected i think that's the best picture i could pick out of all the photographs all the oh, photographs thank you, you so much that was clicked by this very um, talented photographer vivek chandra i remember mm-hmm. doing a very very random photo shoot in this wonderful cultural center called our sacred space in sikandrabad so it was it wasn't very planned also but a lot of people appreciate that picture and the credit goes to the photographer vivek chandra yeah really appreciate it Thank you, Amy. Thank you, friends, Thank for joining. You so much. You have a new friend. I'll share the links, uh, social media links for uh, Amy. Do follow her and appreciate her performances, whatever she is doing, and encourage art. That's the best we can do. So please be part of it. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you.